when she, are, are we starting? We'll get into it. Uh -huh. Margaret, uh -huh. as for you, you look very bold this morning. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure if it is for supporting Nigeria <laughs> in your hey, dream. Nigeria too or, that one. <laughs> or, or, or it's for the other boldness. With less budget. Oh. Less budget. They have shamed us, Papa. But that's the actual Nigeria thing. Nigeria has my, done well. My, my boldness is towards the change that is coming. Mm. His Excellency John Dramani Mahama is coming again to rescue this country. That is why I need to look bold mm. to give hope to Ghanaians. I see. Yeah. Well, well, we'll get straight into it, really, um, so that we're, we're able to manage our time properly this morning. And I, I promise I'll be reading your messages as they come. Let us start with a general assessment of yesterday's speech. He spoke for uh, quite a while. Uh, Doc, you were there. Mm -hmm. What's your general assessment of his speech? Um, so yesterday for me, I think was a turning point for a lot of Ghanaians because the MPP has been in power and has run a government for seven years. Um, during this government, and let me liken this situation. For me, I keep telling people, and I say liken this government to, in academia, I'm a lecturer. I have professors. My professors have held my hand and gradually brought me on board as a good academician. Does that mean that all the methods that my professors used, I will, I'm going to discredit it and say that this is not what is good for me? No. At the same time, too, you're not going to tell your professors or tell your students that, you know what, all the theories that your professors taught you are wrong. No. It's a stepping stone. So I was really excited for the whole of Ghana because everyone wanted to hear what is his vision? What is he bringing on board? What is he going to say that adds on to what the MPP has done, the current administration has done, and at the same time express his vision in a way that tells us that moving forward, we need to give him a chance to also be president. And for me, he delivered excellently. He was so on point. The first part of the, the, the and now we call him leader and flag bearer of our party. The first part of Dr. Baumier's speech emphasized consistently on the achievements that we have made in the seven years. And then he went to talk about the hindrances and the limitations, the things that he believes that these were the issues that troubled us, that challenged us, and that did not go well for us. And then he went on and launched his vision, proffering realistic solutions. He didn't ask for time off. He didn't ask for a honeymoon. He didn't say that I'm not going to do this. I'm go he just went straight into what he's going to do. And I think in brief, that raised hope. It elicited a lot of joy. Unfortunately, Nanaya maybe didn't want to listen to it because she already went there with a or she was already having a mind where I wouldn't even give a chance to listen to what the person is saying. But I can speak and say that for everyone who went with an open mind or who listened with an open mind, millions of viewers across the country, the kind of feedback that I, re I, I received about what Dr. Baumia spoke about, his vision, his statement, his expression, his discussion, his decisions, his emphatic, you know, um, solutions and saying that this is what I'm going to do. It was very positive. And for me, I don't say that this is just for the MPP. I say this is for the whole of Ghana, mm. because that is what we are looking for at the end of the day. What is Ghana going to be? How do we move Ghana from this stage to the next stage? A lot has been done. But I think the challenges that we have faced from COVID to the war and etc., have showed us that as African economies, we are not an island. We are actually right in the middle of all the situations. And when these external exigencies come and hit us, this is how we're going to have to be. So, so what it gives do you say me to a lot of hope that, that there's a lot of things that, in his statement, talks about a future that makes us even more solid than we are today. So for me, that's would, would you agree that it would seem that um, Dr. Baumia seemed to want to associate with um, the things that have gone well in this government, mm -hmm. you know, with... Um, as vice president, as head of economic management team, mm -hmm. working with the president, the things that you know ha have have been successful, like he's spoke extensively about digitalization mm -hmm. and you know where where he's taken us to, where he's brought us to. But he seemed to want to insulate himself from the things that did not go wrong, did not go well or as planned. For example, stating that. 
he had no decision-making powers as head of the economic management team and that he could merely advise? I don't think that he distanced himself from that because I think the vice president spoke a lot about economic growth. He spoke about the growth figures. He even spoke about all the different economic figures that we always look up to, from inflation to depreciation to etc. Yes. And but he, he actually spoke about no, he spoke about the times when these things started improving. You see, there's something that I keep emphasizing every time I'm on air, and I keep speaking to the fact that we haven't come from nowhere. We inherited an economy. What did we do with it? And then what were the factors? In Every, every situation, in every circumstance, there are factors that contribute to the, to, the, to the changes that we see or to the growth figures that we see, to everything that we experience. So he did speak to those issues. Okay. But so he it's also not about the fact that he distances himself. He also very he specifically said it. that he was going to scrap certain taxes. Mm -hmm. um, E-levy, emission, betting, and so on. These are taxes that were implemented at a, t at a time or now when he is the head of the economic management team. He superintended, was instrumental in the implementation of these taxes. And but that is what he kept he, emphasizing. That he was merely advising. Instrumental. Mm -hmm. He said he advises. Mm -hmm. And that's why I used the scenario before I came in. I said, Dr. Baumia said something during his speech, and I kept praying that a lot of Ghanaians would listen to it. He said, I'm not the driver of the vehicle. I have been the mate. I have been the assistant. Being a vice president, your constitutional mandate is totally different. You'd sit in cabinet. Decisions are taken. If at the time, and I always say that circumstances determine decisions that are taken at the time. Circumstances determine the decisions that were taken at that time. If Dr. Baumia perceives changes, he foresees different solutions and different options. And I think that even most importantly, he has proven that he's a listening leader. He's a listening leader because you, you, you listen, you ask yourself that going forward then, what should I do? If, what should if I he's do listening, even why, why well can't he scrap these taxes he's listening. now? He is listening. Why must he but wait he is until not, 2025? He is not, should he, he become is president not, before he's he scraps He is not them? the decision maker. You just said it. Mm -hmm. Why should he wait until 2025? Because it is in 2025 that if Ghanaians give him the mandate to become president, then he's the driver of the car. But if he's, he's the, the head of the economic of the vehicle, management team, he advises. And vice president. He's the president. head of the... He's the head it's of what, the economic, it, it appears as it's one of two things. Let me mandate. just ask you this question. Yeah. Is it that the president does not listen to the vice president and the head of the economic management team when he advises? The president listens. Why, why is it that as head of economic management mm -hmm. team, he has no power mm -hmm. if he believes that certain taxes are inimical to our economy or to just the, the pockets of the people of Ghana? Mm -hmm. His advice, if he's advising that it be scrapped now, he's not listened to. If he's advising that it be scrapped now, he's not the one to take the final decision. So, so his already. advice his falls advice, on deaf ears. No, it doesn't mean his advice falls on deaf ears. You see, I just said it again, that it's about the circumstances and the time. What are the circumstances? Currently, we've gone through a serious economic crisis. We need to raise internal revenue in this country. That is where we've come to. Revenue, domestic revenue, are conditions for meeting IMF, these are the current situations that we face now. But and that is why speech... internal revenue or domestic revenue or raising our own revenue sources has become a priority. And his speech did speak to it. But if you notice, what he did was to say that, I'm going to look at alternative means. He spoke about taxation to a great length. Mm -hmm. He said, I'm going to broaden taxes and look at the different avenues and ways of making sure that if I want to be able to cushion the Ghanaian people without implementing all these taxes that people consistently speak about, this is my vision and this is where I'm going to put Ghana. So okay. he did speak about it. He for, didn't say that I'm not going to tax. For, no, for those of you who might that. have missed um, yesterday's speech or, or part of it, um, let's take a look at just... Uh, bits of it, before I come to you, Nanaya and, and, and Margaret. Let's look at bits of um, Dr. Baumir's speech yesterday, especially the parts that talk about um, taxation, the size of his government, and being the head of the economic management team. The new policies that I am proposing to implement in 2025 will give us the fiscal space to eliminate uh, tax, some taxes, such as the proposed VAT 
on electricity if they are still on the books, the emissions tax, and the betting tax without compromising our fiscal deficit. Under my administration, there will be no taxes on digital payments. The E-11 will therefore be abolished. Gentlemen, I was thankfully appointed as chairman of the economic management team. As a subcommittee of, to cabinet, we do not have any decision-making powers, but I am very proud of the quality of advice we have been providing over the years to cabinet. As vice president, I was asked by the president to assist in solving some of the problems that were inhibiting the transformation of Ghana's economy. My approach was to help formalize the economy through digitalization as stated in our 2016 manifesto. This is why my office has had oversight responsibility for many of the government's digitalization projects. My government will propose that those who, after completion of their education, can secure jobs will be exempted from national service. National service will no longer be mandatory, and students will have the option to decide whether to do national service or not. This will also encourage companies to go to the campuses to recruit annually. This time, they don't go because of national service. And those are bits from the Bold Vision speech that Dr. Baumia delivered yesterday. Nanaya. Yes, my dear. Good morning. Good morning. Let's start with your general <clears throat> assessment of the speech. Let me say good morning to your viewers and good morning to my friend Nanaya. Nanaya stays in some far off place. I went there this weekend. It's not easy, Nana. Good morning. Um. Hmm. You see, I'm, I'm surprised that my sister is saying that I, I had a certain mindset. I didn't do. When I was listening to him, actually, the area on taxes, when he started that we need to broaden the tax uh, uh, net. I mean, for me, it was a good one because about 25% of the whole working population of this country are the ones who are burdened with taxation, especially the public service the formal workers where income tax can be deducted uh, directly. There should be more innovative ways to broaden the tax net. I've been talking about the night um, businesses, those who sell in the night. How mm -hmm. do we reach out to them? And there's also, there should be a merger between taxes by the assembly and how it can fit into some portion of the taxes going to the central government. So for me, that was okay. But then he came into this e-levy and all that because you see if you talk about scrapping all these taxes then for me it is a bit like this government they don't know what they're about because he also said that the world bank says that if we're able to collect all our taxes we are doing about 24 billion and that is a lot for for annual taxes and so I expected him to say something like, because his target is this 24 billion, when he comes, he's going to do a broad stakeholder meeting to find out whether these taxes are relevant. Because he has a target to broaden the tax base. And it, it looked a bit, the whole thing looked a bit like um, some psychosis and schizophrenic environment. That these were people who are safe, had, they have lost touch with reality. Because I was mortified that when he said that he was going to remove those taxes, then everybody said was happy. And so I, I was thinking that these people did not know where they are. Because these taxes are your taxes. Taxes that have been put down by your government. Do you get me? And now that somebody who... So at a point, I thought that I was listening to an opposition leader. Because this is a person who is in government, who is not outside government. If, for instance, somebody like um, Kennedy talked like that, he is not with the executive. He is with the legislature. But you are in government. 
Then you start making excuses that, oh, as a, a chairman of the economic management team, it was advisory. Indicting your president. Trying to say that if I give the advice, my president does not take it. Then you come back and you say that, oh, the president made me solve some of the problems. I mean, then I noticed that it was here and there. It was a bit here and there because he says this then as if he was trying to cover up, trying to, trying to convince us but find it very difficult. If you say you were a driver's mate, sometimes the driver leaves the car to the mate to drive, to take care of. So if you really know about trotro and driver and mates, these days most drivers, most mates, um, they drive. They also learn how to drive. That when the driver is not well or tired, he gives it the mate because the driver prefers the mate to drive than another driver to drive. So if you say you are a driver's mate, you are sitting in the car with the driver. So when the petrol gets finished, who, 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 who has to prompt the driver to buy, buy more fuel? You cannot exonerate yourself from whatever has happened. And there were some also inconsistencies, like he said that they are going to create free zones um, at the borders that uh, he specifically mentioned that flower the whole of ghana has has been declared as a free zone area we have the enclave and we have the i mean single free zone enclaves so everywhere even this place if you build a factory here and you want to be free zone designated as free zone so i was surprised when he said that it already exists then he went over and said that oh Ghanaians should have a mindset of um something like the single tone and the cooker tone, then he come back to say that he, ha he wants to scrap national service. Because that if he knows the basis of national service, national service is meant for us to have a mindset of patriotism, a mindset of sacrifice. That when you finish school, you would work for the country on a very, because they are giving very small pay, and sometimes they are taking to their the, allowances, actually. Uh, yes, their allowances. Mm -hmm. So it is for you to have some form of patriotism that I can serve my nation without being paid anything. That is the basis of national service. So now you are talking about us being patriotic, changing our mindset, and now a system that helps us to be molded in the, to be carved in the mode of patriotism. You said you are taking it away. It does not make sense to me. Then it comes to the issue of electricity. Then he says that he is going to, his government is going to make sure that they uh, infuse solar into the um, national grid to ensure that prices are down. That is, it can never work. You cannot put solar into the grid because solar, when it's in, is as a base load, is very expensive. Because you see, because of intermittency, we don't have all throughout um, uh, 365 days, 366 days, sun. So when it comes to when the rainy season, then it means that you are going to have some intermittency issues. Because you don't have the requisite um, sun to generate the electricity. Then you need batteries. You always need batteries for a backup to store energy. And the batteries that he's talking about for base load is not easy. When you have all those things, then it means that you need to pay more for the solar. It will rather make the price go up. Rather, I expected him to say that he's going to bring in a policy that would make sure that all um, standalone homes, real estate developers, would put solar panels as part of the building as part of the cost, so that the, the, uh, uh, the, this thing, the pressure on the grid will be reduced, so that electricity be, will be more reserved for industry to grow. But if you say you are infusing renewable energy, and I also thought that we have an Atomic Energy Commission, I also thought that he would talk about clean nuclear energy, which is about the cheapest that we have. Because most countries have clean nuclear energy. There are new systems. And from the way he was talking, he's traveled a lot around to learn certain mm -hmm. things. And that is, these are some of the things that I was expecting. New things that his government has not done. That you cannot do in eight years. But not to come condemn what has already been done. 
I mean, for me, it, it, it did not. It did not make sense. He says he did not have the power to make that, decisions. No, uh, husband he could and only wife. Advise. Please, husband and wife. You can So you tell me that the 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 the, the president is the strong, and that when he advises, the president does not uh, this thing. The president does not listen. That's what he's trying to tell us. Do you get me? That is what he's trying to say. I also saw that there was a shift of responsibility. What the private sector accommodation? And I'm like, ah, are you shifting? So what are you going to use the taxes for? The taxes that is given to us, what are you going to use it for? We pay you taxes. You are going to broaden the tax net with your target of 24 billion as stipulated by the World Bank. So then if you get this 24 billion, it means that we are even going off IMF. He also didn't say that with all his digitalization, he's going to use digitalization to broaden the tax net, to catch everybody within the catchment of the uh, um, taxes, those who are supposed to pay taxes. To what? To get them on board for them to be taxed. He didn't say that. And, and it was a bit, I'm like, ah, why, why he should give us a framework? I need that broad frame you spoke about the Ghana card and how the Ghana card is helping streamline the collection of taxes. He no, did. no. He did. You see, if you are going, you see, you are talking about Ghana card where some people don't have it. But the majority of Ghanaians but have I it. I am saying that you have to catch everybody. For me, eh, where the taxes are, where we are not taking taxes, are people, the small, small, small people who are selling by the roadside, people who have small, small kiosks. How the informal sector. The, can yes. I, can I, he, yeah. just, he spoke about the Ghana card. He proposed that we designate the Ghana card as a TIN number. He spoke about the fact that in 2017, only 4% had TIN uh, numbers. My dear, please. We've increased that. No, what those, are, th those are digitized please, methods please, that we are talking please, about. I, I am saying, in broadening the tax I, I am so saying say that. Didn't speak no, no, about I am that. saying that. He did. We, ha we still have the Ghana card. How has it helped us? I didn't want to hear about intervention. The Ghana that, card hasn't helped us. Do you get me? I didn't want to hear. Have you broadened the tax net? We have. If we had broadened How the tax net. have we increased the number of please, taxpayers? If we have broadened the tax net, why are we going to IMF? Why are we going to IMF? Why are we bringing new sand taxes? Because you see, you are not broadening the tax net. You are looking at areas where you can easily target. Electricity domestic consumers, it is there. The data is available. You can easily tax them using ECG. You can easily tax them. We should increase, we should tax people, we should tax electricity. That's just what we are talking that is about what, today. No, no, you see, listen, I am so that saying... That's 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 no, 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 that is not... That, you didn't hear me. That's I am saying said. that... Mm -hmm. I am saying that broadening the tax net means that you are going beyond the areas that are already available. For taxation but he spoke about it no no but you you see don't say thing now we have ghana card why are you not then using it if it is working why are you not using it to broaden the tax base do you get me it is not just talk the okay. thing that is available but to you ghana today do you get me do you get me okay what is, what is available to you today mm? Mm. she took some of my time on. She, she came in. Barely one minute. When she was talking, I didn't speak. It was barely one so, minute. My dear, yes. I, I, I mean, you have to get more innovative ideas. And me, on, on the whole, it was as if the MPP, they are within, they have their own world they are living in. Mm. Because, I mean, it was very, right. I was very, very mortified when the chief of staff was so happy when Baumia said that he was going to scrap these taxes. I mean, right. that, I mean, I didn't even understand it. Let me read some messages coming in, and I'll come to you, Margaret. From um, Evans Dinku in Garu, he says, Now, I think it's time to ask the vice president to refund all of the salary per diem and freebies, including the fleet of cars and house helps, now that we know he is seated in the Jubilee House for nothing. Today, I know that the assemblyman position is thousands of times better than the Dr. Baumia office. This is happening under the Kufuado government. Um, it's no more President Kufuado government. It's, it's no more President Kufuado Baumia government. And he puts a, a hyphen there that um, the vice president has removed himself from it. And Musa Abatwa in Asawasi says, now, nah, I believe you slept well, um, but sorry for the boring evening by Dr. Baumia's lecture. However, I totally agree with Nanaya Jantua. I believe 
it doesn't make sense for the ordinary Ghanaian to fall for Dr. Baumia's tricks. You were part of those who sat on cabinet and implemented these decisions to impose hardships on Ghanaians. In fact, we're told by Osafu Mafu um, that he led most of the policies introduced by the government, including the e-levy. Today, he turns around to say he'll cancel it. Tell him to solve his 170 economic questions before Ghanaians will take him seriously. All right. Um, more messages coming in. I see a video which you're asking us to play. We'll review it and then we'll see if um, we should play it or not. All right. Um, good morning to Margaret and say, Mago, watching you live from Ejisu Constituency, yours truly, Dominic Kesi Ichampong, um, Ejisu Constituency Vice Chairman. All right. And I read one last message. Um, how can Dr. Baumia say he's going to cancel the e-levy, tax emissions levy, and all of the levies that he's been a part of since? Is Dr. Baumia not the leader of the NPP and vice president? If he really wants these levies to be cancelled, why not now? Cancel it now. Why wait until 2025? This is just a scam. All right. Uh, these are a few messages coming in. I promise I'll be reading a lot of your messages today. So please keep them coming. You can um, reach us with the hashtag TV3 New Day on X. All right, Margaret. Thank you. Special good morning to you and your team and uh, our viewers. Yesterday, I unfortunately, I couldn't listen to most of his speech, but I had the opportunity to pick one or two out of it. And um, what I realized, I think the page, the speech was over 77 pages. What I realized uh, was that the vice president and his team is trying to embark on an image restoration theory. And this is a political strategy they've adopted to disassociate themselves from the mess that he and his boss has caused this country. For once, I felt very bad for President Anadu, for the betrayer. He was not even there. Because Dr. Baumia is still patroning President Nanado as a team. And for him to do this to him, I wonder what he can do to him when he gets opportunity to rule over Nanado. But that notwithstanding, Dr. Baumia yesterday has come to reiterate all the things President Mahama has been saying since 2018. That this country is on autopilot, there is no leadership, this government do not listen, the way they are borrowing, the way they are going about, all the things President Mahama and the NDC said yesterday, Dr. Baumia confirmed it. That indeed, he and Nanado's government is a complete waste of a Ghanaian person's time. And this is what he came to exhibit yesterday. Because if you tell us that you do not have powers, as the head of the economic management team. Now, I will give Nanado the credit every day. Since Nanado took or presented Dr. Baumia to the MPP, asked them to give him a waiver because he did not qualify to be a running mate to him. On the basis that Dr. Baumia or Alaji Baumia has all the economic solutions to this country. And for him, Nanado, he needs Alaji Baumia, to complement him to solve the problems of this country. As of that time, even the CD to dollar was less than three cities. As of that time, inflation had never galloped to 54% before. As of that time, the debt of this country was below 100 million. As of that time, Ghanaians were the standard of living, our purchasing power, everything was normal while we were hoping to grow as a country. That was when His Excellency Danado, as a candidate then, chose Alaji Baumia, presented him to the MPP uh, neck that this is the man who has all the solutions to Ghana's problem, therefore give him a waiver. He did not qualify to be a running mate. So if this person has done all this to you, in President Danado's State of the Nation's address, he told us that all the achievements he's been able to gather is as a result of Alaji Baumia's performance. We have heard the senior minister Osafo Mafo, he told us that Alaji Baumia is the head of the economic management team. 
And for him, he is so versatile like the Michael Essien when he was playing Chelsea. He can play, uh, uh, he can play a free kick, he can be the centre, he can be at the line because he was acting as a secretary at a point, he's a member, at a point he's a chair. And Dr. Bamiya was nodding to what he was concurring to what uh, Mr. Safumafu was saying. When you watch the video where he was giving him the praises, he was nodding his head. He was nodding to the galloping inflation. He was nodding to how the CD has depreciated. He was nodding to how our pensioners are picketing. He was nodding to the fact that people have been shaved, giving them haircuts from their own money. He nodded to all that. So why will you come here and come and tell us a different thing? He is telling us that he does not have powers to, 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 to influence the chain, he only recommended. The economic management team, everybody agrees under the NDC. It's been there, it's a silent convention that gives advice to cabinet and all that. It was, even under J. Okufo, we never had this economic management team because it was Dr. Baumia who mounted platforms, announced the names and told us that we have a solid team led by him. There were billboards using Ghana's money to build billboards, displaying the faces and the names with Dr. Baumia, the economic management team. What were all those things meant for? And today, as a marketer, you sell a product to me, then a few years down the line, you come back to me and tell me that the product that I sold to you is an inferior product. And therefore, if my manager is sad and I become the, the, the manager, I will change the product or I will scrap it. Nah. Even a one-year-old child will know that you have a credibility problem. A one-year-old child will know that there is serious crisis in the organization that you are in because you are a betrayal, you are not truthful, and you do not even respect the customer you are talking to. Because these are clear lies. You recommended he left it to cabinet. They accepted it. You recommended all the taxes. You recommended we going to IMF to cabinet. They accepted it. You recommended you sat in meetings where IMF told us that this program is about generating revenues. We've asked you, President Muhammad told you since 2019, cut down your number of ministers. Cut them down. If the number of ministers we had as of 2019, if we are able to reduce just 40, could save this country over 60 63 million every year now. We told this MPP proud to 2020 elections. Dr. Baumia was there. Why didn't he side with President Mahama? That indeed, this is true. I can see that the cabinet size, the, the government size is too huge and therefore it is draining us. So let's side with, with what he's saying and let's cut the ministers to 50. You have sat in. Did you ever hear Dr. Baumia complaining anywhere that he's made some recommendation or he's not being heard to? He said that he's, he is lucky, he is favored because President Anadu has given him the opportunity. And he said all his life he's been solving problems. Now, even a first year research student can look at the data. What is the data? Our debt to GDP under President Mahama. Our inflation under President Mahama. The national debt under President Mahama. What the revenues we accrued, the oil fields we had under President Mahama, just opposite to what uh, President uh, Nanadu and Baumia has. The, the, the 13 billion euro bonds, the revenues generated over 144 billion, the additional two oil fields. What is our debt to GDP today? What is the current rate of inflation? What is the standard of living of the Ghanaian? A first year research student can look at this data and based on the data they have today, can do a predictive research and tell you how worse Dr. Baumia will become if in the unlikely event he becomes a president for one day. This is a complete betrayal. This president, uh, president uh, how do you call this? Alaji Baumia has enhanced his credibility challenges that indeed he is not credible to lead. You cannot look in our face and tell us this. You will scrap E. Levy. Because you upon Kroma, the, 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 the PR of this government, told us you were instrumental. You sat in the economic management team as the head. Probably you were a secretary because they told us how versatile you were. And you recommended this to cabinet. We never heard you for once. 
President Nanatu Mag or President um, Baumia should bring a report Margaret. indicating that yes. they went for cabinet meeting because you know mm -hmm. he has two opportunities to make this this thing happen. He's he's the head of the economic management team, he's part of cabinet. So when UV recommended and he went to cabinet, they should bring us a report where he told them that E levy is bad for Ghanaians. He should bring us a report where he told them that the hundred and twenty-five minutes that Nanadu took and told us he's in a hurry was bad for Ghanaians. He should bring us a report indicating that he said all this that we shouldn't go to IMF. He said that we can toll the roads and construct roads. He told that he should bring a report. Now we are not kissing. You know, this strategy, it won't work. Ghanaians have already formed their opinions about him. It is already done. The change is here. And even this is even so annoying and so disgusting and so, so appalling for you to come and tell us this. What do you say to people who say that Yes, he was the head, he is the head of the economic management team. He was there when all of these taxes were drafted and implemented and so on. However, Doc said this morning that this should suggest to us that he's a le listening leader. And so seeing the response that these, um, you know, taxes and so on has, what Ghanaians have said, he thinks that it's a step in the right direction to scrap all of these taxes. So Dr. Balmia was listening when our old men and women were picketing at the Ministry of Finance. He was listening. Dr. Balmia was listening when businesses were folding up because of taxes. He was listening. Dr. Balmia was listening when the youth were on the streets demonstrating. Dr. Balmia was listening. Dr. Balmia was listening when we did not have vaccines for our children. Dr. Balmia was listening. Dr. Bonia was listening when we had COVID as a country and even all the grants and the money that we got, he was able to treat 83 million grants as goods and services. Dr. Bonia was listening. When President Anadu used 32 million out of COVID money for press conferences, fellow Ghania, Dr. Bonia was listening. What's a listening, Bonia? Indeed. All right. all right. I'll take some messages coming in now. Um, Nanekia Avle um, says, now when the president is absent from Ghana or for any other reason is unable to perform his functions, the functions of his office, the vice president shall perform the functions of the president mm -hmm. until the president returns. Yeah. Baumia is dreaming dreams. He can never take himself out of this mess. Nobody in the NPP is taking responsibility for the mess we are in. This is so sad. And this one says, good morning. Now I keep wondering why Dr. Baumia hasn't resigned yet mm -hmm. because by his own words, he was just a mate and when the driver was not listening to him. Mm -hmm. Unless, of course, he's just patronizing us yet again. And more messages coming in on X. Um, now, nah, the value is the same. Um, Vava says, the new force, hashtag. And Bra Mafu says, I really didn't get anything from the speech. In Sia Fani Nina. Um, Leslie says, we are ready to pay through Momo. Okay, all right. Um, Ruben says, according to Dr. Baumier's speech, he disagrees with the majority of the policies implemented by the Kufuado administration. Interesting. Um, Majid says, now, nah, did this woman just say she's a lecturer? Baumia is only interested in emotionally blackmailing Ghanaians for power. Nanado made Ghanaians believe that he was going to govern Ghana. But Baumia's economic brains, okay, with Baumia's economic brains. So Baumia should not, okay, should be taking... Seriously, right? So you're saying we should take Baumia seriously because Nanado said he was going to govern the country economically with Baumia's brains. Um, Auntie Ako said, I really didn't get anything from the speech. And finally, let's not ask this question. I'm convinced no government can ever change Ghana. We are done. All right. Um, Doc, do you want to react to any of the things um, that the ladies have said? I do, and very, very strongly. I'm surprised at Margaret because... If we were to go back and ask ourselves what um, former President John Mahama did and why he's asking for a comeback, then we are even in a more dire situation because he left a grappling economy, an economy that couldn't even stand on its feet. The economy is standing on its feet. And to keep saying that Dr. Baumia... You say Baumier, the economy is standing on its feet standing now. on its feet. We have, we that, have, we, that's, we, that's we've made it. Yes, we've made a turn around. Things are coming back. And then at the end of the day, I keep asking, and we keep calling out to Ghanaians and saying that, yes, things are not easy. But you see, I wanted to make a point. At a, I mean, I, I kept missing one. When we are talking about, you remember at a point in Ghana, 
we were asking for cost of living allowance. You remember cola became a thing. Mm -hmm. All of these things are pressures on government that taxes have to pay. And that's why I kept emphasizing during my, my initial submission that circumstances call for specific measures. If Dr. Baumia foresees and has seen that fast forward to 2025, these taxes wouldn't be needed anymore. I would proffer solutions, alternate, which I see as being what can drive us and can help us to raise our revenue. He spoke about, and he talked about the revenue. He spoke so emphatically about the revenue situation. He has not detached himself in any way from the Akufuado Baumia administration. Why can't he implement in fact, his suggestions from, now? And that is what I spoke to you about. That's what I kept emphasizing. That. Implementing these suggestions now is not viable for the country. But it'll be at the moment, in the domestic, next but even the months. next in the next um, eight months, months, you can see that measures that you've put in place, such as the uh, national identity, the, the cards, the TIN numbers, improvement in public sector, improvement in you remember taking out ghost names. All these digitization efforts are to help us reduce. And his prophet is very realistic solutions as to how he's going to make sure that we cut down on expenditure, we increase the, domestic these revenue. These suggestions are he's so good about and so realistic. The taxes. These, these suggestions about are so good measures. and so realistic. Why, can, why would the president... Overnight. Why would the... I they mean, this, the, the, overnight. I, I'm sure he's had these ideas for a while. Why would the and president he's not listen... It. To these I fantastic don't think it's ideas. about the president why is can not they listening. Not we keep, be, why have we they keep, not been implemented? We, we, we keep debating and going to the president is not listening. And I keep mentioning the fact that the circumstances now mm -hmm. demand harsh measures. They demand certain things that we unfortunately have to go through. I keep talking about the so fact that... So these are that great for the have, time being. At the moment, this is what we have to do. The E-Levy is great for the time being. You, why, you know, why, I have been why, one of the people who talked about... Why has there been a suspension of the VAT, the 15%... Um, VAT um, on electricity. It is to engage stakeholders. I think the ministry's um, statement says it says expect that these engagements will be both innovative, robust. It also they also have to go back to the IMF. I think you know that increasing our tax revenue was a condition for the IMF. Mm -hmm. Now this 15% um, VAT was supposed to also broaden, but if it's going to still be on the same people. At the end of the day, everybody uses electricity. Yes. You know, but one you of the things said, that we the keep reason talking I ask about this question is, is broadening Doc, the tax The reason I ask this question, Doc, is that you say that at the moment, these taxes are necessary. At the moment, at the we moment, don't have a choice. You are saying we, we don't need have a to choice, build the economy. We need domestic we, to be able to exactly, um, generate to revenue. To generate so revenue. since they are so necessary right mm -hmm. now, why are we suspending one in order to go back and engage stakeholders? And I just said it. You see, we have to go back to IMF. There's going to be a deficit if we don't collect up to a certain mm -hmm. um, amount. Mm -hmm. So we have to go back to IMF, go and negotiate, and find how best we can Did you not know this at a time when it was implemented on the 1st of February? Oh, it is not about the fact that we don't know this at the time when it was implemented. Every specific policy in this country is well-meaning. It is meant to help solve a problem. Okay. But if it comes out and it is not received well by Ghanaians, you, you, you were listening the to The E-Levy was you not received well by Ghanaians. And today the E-Levy, you remember initially, the E-Levy, there was a lot of town hall discussions, there was a lot of meetings. And it was and implemented then anyway. It was implemented, but I remember it was reduced. It was reduced to 1.5%. And then the, the um, you know, the composite, I always forget what term that is, but the composite payment of a certain amount was also scrapped at the time. Now, remember, I remember one thing the about tolls? calculating. No, no, it wasn't it. The tolls was, was, was all already taken away in the same budget statement that introduced e the e yes. But the um, initial, remember, there was, there, was a, there was a base amount. or there was a, I keep forgetting what term we use for it. But that amount was also scrapped from E-Levy. And then it was reduced to 1.5. And then today it's been further reduced. But for me, I keep saying that this um, going back to stakeholders at each point in time is so necessary. And that shows the power of a listening government. So I don't think anybody should say that Dr. Baumia and Dr. Baumia is associating himself. In fact, I just went through his sentence, um, his, his, his whole his statement. statement, and I have counted 38 times his mention of President Nana Akufuad. No, and mentioned. talking about the things that they have done. And I don't see why anybody would then call for the fact that he disassociated himself. No. He actually because is climbing on the back of the achievement. Because his achievement when you in make this an government, emphatic he's gone all the way yes. to 59. When you make an emphatic statement mm -hmm. that you have no decision-making powers, yes. but yours is only to advise, advice. He's, it presupposes. But that is his that, constitution. That
It's now mandate. Yes, that, that's all. That's what. Well, that's say. all I but can do. But he advises. You know, he okay. at a point he even emphatically he says that. No, no, no. He keeps. He said it. He says that. One of the things that I am very, I'm um, thankfully appointed as a chairman of the economic management team. Mm -hmm. He stated, yeah. and as we do not have decision making, he said, yeah. as a subcommittee to cabinet, yes. we do not have any decision making powers. But I am but proud of the, the quality of advice. Parliament. Maybe what yes. you want, you want, you want him. And Margot is calling for minutes of the meetings and. Maybe that's what you want to know. But he says he's proud of the advice. We are not privy to all the advice. But what we know is, now he says, I am coming in. And this is what I want to proffer. Because I see all of these things that has been done. And there's still more to be done. Okay. And this is what I'm proposing that we then do. All right. Uh, Nanaya. You see, I'm saying that when he, he advised, mm -hmm. and he noticed that the advice was not being taken, and he realized that it's not... He, had, he didn't say his it, advice was in... No, but he said that he only advises. What, what does he want to imply? Do you get me? Whatever he's trying to say should not be shouted in secrecy. Okay. He should, let, he should not let us speculate. He should be able to tell us what it means that he's only an advisor. If you tell me I'm only an advisor, it means that you are not part of the problem. So take me out. I only, Nashoko, I only advise you to wear an ash shirt. I didn't say you should wear it too. So if a problem comes, it's not me. Did you get me? So this is exactly what it means. No matter how you want to color it, no matter how you want to change the mood, it means that you were not involved in decision making. Do you understand? Because for now, you say that you want to have only 15 ministers. So did you advise the president to have 50 ministers? And he did not listen. Because as a vice president, if you have all these ideas, why, why don't you tell, help your president to implement it? And Nashoko, it is not too late for him to change all these things. He should go and tell Nanado right now that A, B, C, D, E, don't do it, scrap. Mm? And let's see what happens. Because for instance, E. Levy, E levy is a very nuisance levy. It's a, a levy that he, we don't even need Dr. Baumia to tell us that it should be scrapped. The basis and the arguments around E levy was the fact that we, we are going to IMF, we are in a deep hole, and that if we are able to get E levy, enough resources of 6 billion Ghana cities, we won't go to IMF. But now we are in IMF. Why are we still keeping the E levy? Why are we still keeping it? So these are all new sans taxes. And he's here. When um, the, the dialysis unit at Kolebu couldn't pay 4 million Ghana cities, and that young girl died, where was Dr. Baumia? That young girl, you showed him on, her on TV. She died, and 22 people died. Where was he? Where was he? Eight people died 2020, during the elections, nobody has said anything about it. His Excellency Dr. Baumia, where has he been? Did he advise that we should investigate it? Or did he tell that he is the chairman of the police council? Eight people died. Eight. What has he been able to do to bring those people who killed those eight people to book? 22 people died because they could not get the treatment they need to let them stay alive. Was he in this country when it happened? Was he? Right now, he's telling us that he wants to reduce fiscal responsibility on government and put it on the private sector. You want fiscal responsibility on you to be reduced and you put it on private sector. So that there will be prudence. It means on your own, you cannot be prudent. Why do you reduce, I mean, reduce fiscal responsibility? This is your responsibility to make sure that the fiscal regime works. That is why we pay our taxes. That is why our, our, the revenue from our resources come to you. Royalties. You get me. He wants to set up a district minerals commission. So this time you cannot do that. You have waited for Galamse to destroy our waters. I mean, seriously, me, this one is very psychotic. 
psychotic. I, I, yes, because it, it's as if they are, they, 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 are, they are just thinking, thinking about themselves. Do you get me? Their, their reality is just for them. But when we say that, okay, if Baumia had all these ideas, why did he not um, propose it to our president? Why didn't he resign when they were not listening to is him? Is that a realistic ask? Why is it not realistic? You are a partner. The constitution even says that when the president is unable to perform his duty, you are the one to take over. He's mm -hmm. even acted as president 21 times. Do you get me? Mm -hmm. What was he doing then? We have a typical example in this country where we woke up and our president, who was not feeling very well, had died. Mm -hmm. The next moment, a vice president who woke up as vice president became president. So it means that the vice presidential position is not a small position. You are number two in the scheme of things. You cannot tell us you don't have power. He doesn't have decision-making power. No, but I am saying that if your president is... Because whatever happens, it is you and your president. That is, then we should scrap the position of vice president. If the vice president says that he has no powers, then we should scrap it. Because your duty is to be with your president and help him to work. It is like husband and wife. Yes. Your and, help meet. And on, on that same score... Yes. yes his position is to be with the president. Yes. And so if the president makes decisions as mm. vice president, is he not mandated to oblige and go with it? Even though he might, might have his own opposing... To the detriment he, of the country, he swore an oath. When he was wearing the oath, the president did not hold the sword for him. Mm. He swore an oath to the people of Ghana. Yesterday, he himself acknowledged that we are his employers. He swore an oath that he would do good by us. The president wasn't there with him when he held the oath of office. Do you think that he has done wrong by us? Has he done good by us? Everything that happened, he never lifted a finger. He never said, it is as if you are in a home and you are being molested by your father and your mother is sitting aside. Forever you hate your mother. I'm sorry, but I have to interject. Do now you I get me? Do you have a, 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 a card? Do you have a, a Ghana card? No, I don't have a, Why are you asking You don't me? believe in it. I said, why are you asking So me? when you go to the bank, what do you do? How do you verify? I don't have a, I don't have right. a bank no, account. No, no, to, to, to say right. that no, I never right. did good right. by no, asking. No, but, 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 it does not pay my medical bills. It does not buy fuel for me. If I'm holding a Ghana card in my wallet, it does not. It is my, my bank card. That if I have money in my pocket and on my bank card, that is what buy fuel for me, for me to move from A to C to even come and sit here. If you have a Ghana card in your wallet, it does not produce money for you. It does not give you food. And I am saying that the data does not support the reality. You say that inflation is 23%. It's, that's why I'm saying that it's possible they are in a psychotic state. Where their reality is their own. Because if your reality is not your own, you will not tell me that, do I have a Ghana card? I don't need a Ghana card to do anything. If I don't have money in my bank account, what am I going to use a Ghana card for? Now you could tell me. I don't have money in my bank account. Why do I need a Ghana card to go to bank? To do what? There's nothing there. All right. Let, let me read some messages and I'll come to you, Margaret. Um, the landlord from Borga says, leaders are made of substance, and that's what sets them apart. The Ghanaian electorate will not hand over power to a comical flip-flopper who runs away from what he has always been known to be, just for electoral purposes. All right. Uh, more mess messages coming in. Prince Henry from Covergia says, depending... Defending the NPP led by Baumia now is the most difficult task in Ghana now. When your fundamentals are weak, your defenders will suffer, um, Dr. Baumia. And Stephen says, now, nah, His Excellency John Mahama has already made it public that the e-levy, among other things, are killer taxes and will be scrapped in 2025 when the great NDC takes over. NPP communicators should, um, okay, are defending rot, particularly a learned doctor on a panel of struggling people okay to defend Ghanaians need to break Ghanaians need a break please and that's from Stephen Peng texting us from Wa. and then this one finally says from Idi Koko okay Idi Koko says nah do you know that the prof is embarrassing herself this country is standing on its feet really tell her to use um, that as a question 
Is this country standing on its feet? Tell her to use that as a question for her students and see the education she will um, get and update herself and come back to reality next time. And finally, Mike Aflu says, my simple message for Dr. Baumia is, um, it literally means that there's a difference between brain and common sense. When human being has a brain, it does not necessarily mean that they have common sense. Um, Intelligence. Not intelligence, yeah. I think, I think it's wisdom and intelligence. Wisdom and intelligence. Yeah. And not common, not common sense. sense. Not I beg your pardon. Yeah. Not common sense. Yeah. All right. Uh, Margaret. Hmm. Now, <coughs> let, me, let me even take it from this Ghana card. As funny as it may be, but it's a serious issue. Do you know that the Ghana card system could not identify or figure out Dr. Baumier's spiritual father, Reverend Kusi Boate, when he had another name called Kwabna Edujenfi. Did you get a response from the Ghana card? This same Ghana card that they are touting, their controller general has been taking salaries for 27 months. But we were told that when you are 60, it automatically goes off whatever. 27 months. What is, what is this fixation about Ghana card this morning? Nah. The problems are real. Ghana card. You understand? The problems are so real. As we say on the streets, the hustle is real. We are hustling. Proper there is one. nothing going on in this country. Is it education? Health? What is it? Energy? What? Name them. The, the ministries. What, what is happening in this country? Please. I expected Dr. Baumia to first of all apologize to Ghanaians. Uh -uh. You see, we could have taken him more serious. He should first of all apologize to Ghanaians. You cannot be the head. Go to Dr. Alaji Baumia's website. He is, he's posted it there as the head of the economic management team. He has told us what he does. It's on his website. I just, I just copied it. Dr. Mahmoud Baumia is the vice president of the Republic of Ghana. He chairs the economic management team, which is broadly responsible for shaping the government policies and guiding their implementations. He is at the forefront of I the board. I will the implementation. For shaping the government mm -hmm. policies mm -hmm. and guiding implementation you can even stop there and you are talking you have you have skipped uh, uh, education age you have skipped industry age you have creative age you are building creative age on agriculture age what kind of logic is this the late emisata said he said you cannot govern the country with textbooks hmm. you cannot economics now you cannot govern the country with textbooks you see these people have taken us for granted and they are destroying the country that has over 60 percent of its population being under 30 years now you and I, what do we have? Can we look into the future, as maybe as researchers, look into the next 10 years and predict what this country will be under these people? Ekufuado and his courts have completely destroyed this country. In the history of the Ford Republic, this is the first time that we have seen the Bank of Ghana building, yet there is no money in there. This is the first time in the history of the Fourth Republic that we have experienced a, a deficit of about 15%. In the history of this government, inflation went as far as 54%. You will be standing at a short when you buy. When it? you buy now, the owner will tell you that I have had the call, the price has increased. Mm. In this country, under the, 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 the whiskey Dr. Baumia. It is coming down. Since November 2020, we are not servicing our debt. What dollars are we changing to go and, to go and service our debt? You travel outside this country, you meet your colleague Africans, Kenyans and Nigerians are pointing, oh, you Ghana, you can't pay your debt, you Ghana. The way they held us in high esteem. Now when, you're, when your colleague sees you, they, they ridicule us. Mm. That Ghana, you cannot pay your debt. This is where we are. But during President Muhammad's time, we paid our debt with the speed of light. Mm. 
during President Mohammed's time. This is the clear distinction. I said, let every researcher take the data available to them and predict into the future of President Mohammed and Dr. Baumia. And let's see what we're going to have. It's a no, no, no for this government. Is ah, Kennedy Japan has said it. That Dr. Baumia cannot defend what he says. And it will go against It is not just defending. By 2018, there will not be uh, any issue with water and toilets. And Dr. Baumia still stand on the podium and talk about toilets. He told us that we shouldn't give credit to Mahama for solving Doomso. He was lying to Ghanaians again that he solved Doomso. Peter Mehu, the energy minister, was at. What megawatt have they added to the grid? He said none. Chairman Sabos said, why are we giving credit to President Mahama for solving Doomso? Then you turn around in seven years, you look into our faces and, and spew this to us. What is he taking us for now? It's high time. You see, I am, I am so overwhelmed by, by a whole academia doctor of books who deals with research and is doing this to us as a country. And we, the young one, you raise your head up and you envisage into the future and you see nothing is so blare. This is where these guys have brought us. They talked. They bragged. They gave promises. Ghanaians believed in them and was waiting to see the unknown. And this is what we have on our hands. We can't pay our debts. Kenyans and Nigerians are laughing at us. Such no, a shame. Dr. Baumia has said time and time again that they, they took over the economy that the NDC left. So where we are now is really because of the problems that they've had to solve since assuming power. Nah. You see, when, when I hear this kind of talk, even today, as of 2024, then I am tempted to believe that these guys are, be, are being consciously liars. They are lying consciously. The IMF, I won't take you far, the IMF program that we went into, they have given this country under Dr. Baumia, the head of the economic management team, to take three years to restore our debt to DDP, where President Mahama left it in 2016. That was before COVID. IMF. In 2016, the IMF and even President Mahama himself, with the two additional oil fields we left, with the uh, stabilization, with the, the, how do you call it, the homegrown policies, ESLA, sinking fund, stabilization Definition. fund, heritage fund. The IMF, together with President Mahama himself, predicted that Ghana will grow over 8% in 2017. What did they do in 2017? They should tell us. Is it planting for food and jobs where we, are, we secure the money for them? What did they do? And in 2017, truly the economy grew. What happened in 2018? What happened in 2019? When their own policies started staring them, robbing them in their faces, we rushed to IMF. You took loan, $2 right. billion, 20, uh, 2018, $3 billion, 2019, $3 billion, 2021, $3 billion, 2022. When you couldn't go to the international markets because you were blacklisted, you went to IMF. And you want to talk about a mess, a mess that we left money for you to pay President Kofor's euro bond, which was supposed to mature into, ask them the 13 billion bonds they have taken, which money will President Mahama use when it matures? All right. I'll read some messages coming in now. Elliot Wogbe says, Dr. Baumia has lied about every single thing, from digitalization to the economy and even to employment. No wonder he couldn't comment on LGBTQ. The government is simply clueless, and we, the youth of this nation, will not sit and watch um, this empty government steer the affairs of this country. Enough is enough. And that's from Elliot Wogbe. Antoinette says, my sister, this morning is not for us. This morning is not for us as Ghanaians. Logically, we cannot thread together what the vice president said. And Nane Kriya Avlawan one time says, oh, now, um, the advices are more annoying. It simply means that he's giving wrong advices. His bad advices is what has brought us into this intense mess. Advice on Punye. Uh, okay, uh, th these are a few messages coming Nane in and on X. All right, on X. Um, good morning, now. After listening to this bold vision yesterday, I can't even see. My vision is blur. Um, okay. All right. Now, all the thing is baller. Take away, please. Give me. Okay. So the question was, what's your take away from Dr. Baumir's speech? And the response was, take away. Please put this in a rubber for me because I cannot carry this one. And all right. And um, another question: Do you believe that Dr. Baumia, after listening to his speech, is going to be a good president for our country? Henry says, absolutely yes. 
his uh, precedent and presidential material. And Wesley Genesis says he's a Judas to us. Okay. And um, finally, in my honest opinion, Dr. Baumia should have resigned earlier when he had a vision of running for the president because it looks like he's not proud of anything in his administration as vice president. Almost all the things he said were the opposite of what his government is proud of. And this is what he's campaigning against. Okay, and Prince Henry has said, says, defending the MPP now is the most difficult thing to do if you are a Ghanaian at the moment. And these are messages coming in from you. Our time is up. I, I wish I could, I could come back um, to you ladies one more time. But that's all our time this morning. Um, on big issues. Thank you so much. Thank you. Now. Thank you so much. And I, I promise that I was going to do well to read your messages. I think I've read quite a number of them this morning. Thank you for sending them in. Um,